rule over a few things. Everybody say faithful. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Said the same thing um, to the one who had two talents. Verse 24, he received one talent. That one, he came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathered where you have not strawed. And I was afraid. Everybody say fearful. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, thou hast thine, uh, that, is, that is thine. So he's basically, that's King James. Let me give you Anthony James' version. Basically, this guy was like, I know you. I know that you are a very powerful and influential and shrewd boss. And you expect something in return. So I was so afraid of losing it that I did nothing. And the boss man said, you're a wicked servant. Let me take what you have and let me give it to the faithful ones. Let me read it so that I instead of preaching it he said unto that verse 26 the Lord said unto him thou wicked and <laughs> lazy servant thou knewest I reap where I sow not gathered where I have not strawed thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming I should have received mine with at least some usury I should have at least gotten some interest on the one now just so you understand a talent is not the ability to play the piano or the ability to sing or the ability, ability to draw pictures or whatever. That's not the kind of, that's different kind of talent. It's not like a, a, a Israel's got talent that he was looking for the talent, you know. It was a weight, a measure of weight worth of gold coins. Probably 75 pounds. I don't know how much. Let's just say it was about $10,000. What could you do with a $10,000 check? Well, I did nothing with it. He said, man, you should have at least put it in a, a savings account that gives 0.00001%. You'd have done better than doing nothing with it. I mean, zero. Give me that bag of money, and I'm going to give it to the faithful. Are you understanding the parable here? So Jesus continues, and he says, for, every, for verse 29, For unto everyone that has, it shall be given. He shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. What? That's the principle? That's not even Christian. <laughs> you know? It's like take it from the guy who's got very little and just take that whole thing from him, leave him with nothing, and give it to the one who doesn't need any more. He's already got enough. That's not even Christian, is it? I mean, that sounds like you're beating on the weak and the rich get richer and the poor get poor kind of stuff. It's not about money. This is not a parable. It's, it, he's using money, but he's, it's not about money. To the one that has, he gets more. What, what does he have? This parable is about the fearful or the faithful. This parable is about the faithful Spirit of God in this place. You may not realize it. You know God. I know you. You're a powerful God. But yet you're paralyzed from doing what, a, what God has called you to do. And the difference is faithful or fearful. I'm going to talk to you about the faithful versus the fearful today, okay? Faithful versus the fearful. Let's put our Bibles down, our electronic devices. Put your hearts, your, close your eyes, lift your hearts, your hands, your voices with me, that God would have his way in the next few moments. Jesus, we pray for your spirit to continue to move, Lord, that our understanding would be awakened. Speak to us, Lord. Let the spoken word, the written word, let it agree with what the spirit is saying in this house. Get us in one mind and one accord. Every distraction, we take authority over it. We bind it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated faithful servant another gospel in Luke it says it differently he said he said unto them well done well thou good servant because you have been faithful in very little you will have authority over 10 cities so if you're faithful in little you'll be rewarded with much if you're faithful you'll have a reward 
But the one that was punished and sent in what the Bible calls it outer darkness, where there's weeping and grinding of teeth, that place belongs to the fearful. In fact, in Revelation, it says there's a whole list of people that are going into the lake of fire, and on that list is the fearful. It's like the ones that are... Um, it, it's, they've done nothing. They've done nothing because of fear. Revelation 17 and 14 says they're going to make war with the Lamb, these overcomers. They're going to overcome the Lamb. I mean, they're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And, and, and it says, For He is Lord of lords, King of kings, and they that are with Him, who? With God. The ones that are warring against the Lamb, there's some that are with the Lamb. There's some that are with them, and He's got Lord of lords and King of kings written on Him. And, and, and this, this, this powerful being, this God that's riding on a white horse in, in the battle of Armageddon, it's the end times, right? There's people with God. There's people with him in the battle. And those are the people who are called, chosen, and faithful. Amen. You've got to be faithful. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, be faithful, not fearful. So, there you go. You just preached my message. Amen. Deuteronomy 7 and 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God. Are you thankful that we have a faithful God that we can be faithful to? Amen. God, let's start with Him. God is not fearful. God is not fear. The Bible says God is faithful. That God, even Himself in His character and His divine nature, has an element of faith. He's a faithful God. Psalm 119 and 138 says, Thy testimonies and that thou hast commanded are righteous uh, and they are faithful, very faithful. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God is faithful. God is faithful. All throughout the Bible we read 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you but as, as such as common to man. In other words, every struggle you're going through, someone's gone through it. It's common. It's not some unique situation. You may feel like you're all alone on an island somewhere, but God has already provided a remedy and a solution for your situation. In fact, it says God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above your able. But with that struggle, he'll make a way of escape. Why? Because God always has a way out for you. He's the way out for you. And he is faithful to give you that solution if you are ready for it. If you are faithful today, you serve a God who is even more faithful than we will ever. He is dependable. A different translation, and it's called the message. I love it. It's First Thessalonians 5.24. It says, the one who's called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Amen. If he said it, he will do it. The problem is not that he doesn't do it all the time, but we're not always faithful to receive it all the time. If I had a bag of clothes up here and they're nice clothes or, or whatever, pick your favorite thing you like, bag of food, um, I don't know, fancy suits, ties, dresses, and I, and I put them on the, a rack and the rack said free. Yeah, free, this way. F-R-E-E, -E, free. Amen. That means you can, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. That's what that means. How would that, all that beautiful, expensive, whatever it is, you, if you wanted it, it fit you. It looked good on you. you. You imagine having it. It would have to be, what, taken. You can take it. And you'd have to take it and bring it home with you in order for that free stuff to be yours. Right? So in that concept, it's simple. Man, all you got to do is stand up, excuse yourself, because there'll be a stampede up here. Just excuse yourself. Go after that beautiful dress for your wife that you want. Take it home to her and bring it to her and say, I got it at the church. It was free. It's a simple thing. You have to do something, though. But it's simple, that what you have to do. The word of the Lord is like the stuff that's up here. God is faithful to always provide us with a spread. The simplicity of getting up and taking what God has for us can be so complex and so difficult for us to do when we have fear. When we have fear. And, and, and fearfulness is a whole nother level of fear. Okay? Now, there's, there's two kinds of fear in the Bible. One is a fear of the Lord, 
and one is just fear, okay? So the fear of the Lord is, a, is healthy. The fear of the Lord is a good fear. That really is more of a reverence, a respect for the Lord. God will, will, will be, is to be revered, is to be respected, okay? Authority has its way like that. Now, um, my daughter, who's right here, if I raise my voice in a certain tone, uh, or if I kind of get up in her, no, she probably wouldn't because she knows me, but some, somewhere, uh, it, maybe when she was younger anyway, uh, there, would be, there would come over a, a child when dad gets upset or whatever, a certain type of fear, okay? And, and, and it's not like Freddy Krueger or horror you know, film kind of fear. It's a fear of respect. I, and what happens to that kind of, you in that kind of fear makes you want to straighten up, makes you want to do right. Whoa, I don't want to go wrong. I don't want to go sour. I don't want to go left or right. I better do what dad says. I better do how God wants. That, that kind of fear is a good fear. It's healthy. The Bible says you have that kind of fear, you'll live longer. Why? Because you won't do stupid stuff. I'm sorry. You won't do, what's the better word? Risky stuff. Sin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, you won't do, oh, silly, you said. Don't do silly things. Whatever the word is. Stupid is not a word I'm supposed to use from the pulpit. I'm not behind the pulpit. You won't do... Things like jump off a bit of, out of a plane with a parachute. That's crazy stuff, man. You got to fear the Lord, you know. If you have the fear of the Lord, you won't do drugs and drink a lot of alcohol because, because you fear the Lord. And that kind of stuff will lead to death, you know. You won't drive drunk. You won't do some, you know, some of the crazy stuff that people do that, that don't fear the Lord. They're, they're, there's a lack of fear of the Lord. If you have no fear of the Lord, you'll bring strange fire to the altar. You don't fear the Lord. You know what? You don't live as long because fire from heaven will fall and consume you or something else will come upon you. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and they that fear the Lord will live long. It's like the scripture that says, uh, honor your father and mother. They that honor their father and mother and live long, have a long life. Somebody said, why do you live longer if you honor your father and mother? I said, man, you must not have been raised with a, <laughs> my dad. <laughs> if I didn't fear my dad, I'd be dead today. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't have lived this long, you know? So if you honor your father and mother, they just won't kill you. That's what that means. So <laughs> you live longer. Amen. But there's a different kind of fear that the Bible is, is absolutely just the opposite in its, uh, in its um, response to the one who has it. This type of fear is rejected by Scripture. This type of fear is not condoned. It's not condoned. It's not welcomed. It's not good. It doesn't say it's the beginning of wisdom. It literally is the end of all good things. You, you stop the flow of blessings. You no longer can receive favor from the Lord. You actually lose what little you have. And it's given to somebody else. Okay? This is a fearfulness that Scripture says belongs to the wicked, belongs to the lazy, and belongs to those that, are, that hell is for. All right? I know that we were clapping and shouting. And never preachers preach about hell. They always lose like 300, you know, percent of the people. That, okay, I get it. But Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. And when he did, he usually used messages about money and helped people understand what he is talking about. He wasn't talking about money, and he wasn't trying to put people in hell. He was talking about how to handle what God has given you and what happens if you don't handle it right. That's exactly what he's talking about. So let me preach a little bit. Every one of you has got a measure of faith. Every single one of us has been dealt a portion of faith inside of us. God himself has revealed his faithfulness. Animals know that if they do what God created them to do, that he will fulfill his calling. So the migration of different, you know, different animals, they, they go somewhere uh, and they know that the, the food source and the, the life supply, whatever it is they need, will be there because God already put it in motion. And so animals, insects, different creatures, the plant world, every everything in creation relies on God's laws and God's uh, 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 word and his nature's, uh, you know, whatever, the physics and laws of nature to stay the same, to be faithful, to be there so that they can live and so that they, but we're the only part of creation that struggles with God's faithfulness. Yeah, Am I making sense? Or yeah. I just go back to my notes. I've got good stuff written. Faithfulness that God has ought to set us free. It ought to just set us free, you know. If he'll catch me when I fall, I don't have to worry about falling. I can just run. Right? 
I could just live my life. If I trusted God, here, you know what? Jesus used parables about money. Maybe that's helpful. If you really believe God was faithful, you'd pay your tithe. You'd give because the scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you. But if you have fear and you don't trust that, so you have fear, okay? I want to talk about it. Not long, probably. Fear will paralyze you. Okay, scripture says that there is there is a torment in fear. John said that fear has torment. Okay, there, you know, if you think about what happens to people with fear, Moses called 12 noble men out of the tribes of Israel. He said, I want you to go check out the promised land that God has promised us. And let's find out what the land is like land, not the people. Right. We don't care about who who's possessing the land now God gave it to us let's go see what's going on now why don't we just walk in well because they may not want us to walk in and tell them this is our land there might be a fight there might be a battle just go check it out see what you come back with 10 of those guys came back and they saw giants and they said we're grasshoppers in their sight we are not going to be able to possess this land we're going to do nothing two of those guys said I see a God and the promise is good. I saw fruit. I saw grass. I saw swimming pools. I saw big houses. I saw all kinds of stuff. There was a big old grocery store. One dude said, there's this beautiful view on this house on a mountain. I totally want that house right there. I know there's giants living there. But God has a powerful thing about God is he'll split the Red Sea. He'll do all kinds of stuff. We saw what he did to Pharaoh and all that, man. this This is nothing compared to that. God. God is faithful and he's able let's take the land and the other guys were like whoa we're going to get killed okay fear versus faith yeah, yeah. and fear spread like the plague man and they, they and, and the bible says in the end times literally one of the signs of the ends men's hearts failing for fear yeah heart attack man <gasps> sign of the end there's so much fear You know what really sells in this world right now? Fear. Think about all the movies that are coming out this year. I don't even know them, but I know one because I'm a Marvel fan. Endgame, man. It's the end of the world. R.E.M. had it right when they sang that song. It's the end of the world. Really? I'm going to watch that. It's just what I'm interested in. I want to see things, you know, I want to, I'm all, because there's a sense of like, touch that part of me that's just afraid of this you know the world's gonna fall apart and you know it used to be when we were kids when I was a kid that you were not to go check the phone there there used to be anybody know what a phone booth is anybody remember what a what like a pay phone is it didn't flip it rang there was actual bells in this thing that (laughs) vibrated and rang okay and it was connected to a, a steel cord and you hung it up and you had to call and ask the operator to call somebody if you didn't have money and so but if you had a, a quarter I, I was I, I'm, I'm young enough to remember it was only 25 cents and then it got higher and higher but I mean I'm old enough but when 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 the quarters would which you, if they didn't answer the phone and you hung up the quarter would go through the machine and spit out the bottom you with me used to be that some people would forget their quarters in there and so every time I went through a phone when I saw a phone booth I'd stick my finger in there and maybe one out of five times, I'd get a quarter. I don't know why I wanted a quarter that bad, but it's, hey, what's the point, man? It was, it was, stick your finger in there, right? Well, I remember my friends telling me, this is so dumb. No, don't do that. Why not? Because people put AIDS on a needle, and they stick it in there, and you'll get AIDS. I'm like, it was back when we didn't understand this stuff, you know? And I'm like, What? I don't, I'm afraid to do that. I'm like, fine, I'll take all the quarters. And I just didn't care, you know. I'm like, that's a, that's a lie. There's all kinds of, now, it's different today. You know, how about, how about this? I'm off, I'm like a little, let me, let me get on my soapbox for a second. How about this? Forward this to 10 people, and if you don't. <laughs> you'll get leprosy or something, you know. Like, it will come upon you. But if you do. Microsoft will call you and send you $2 million. It's like, oh, I got to do it. This is a fear, you know. It's like, I got to do it, right? This is, this is what people, fear in Scripture 
does something to you that God, is, let me tell you something. The Bible says that we have not been given a spirit of fear. God does send evil spirits. He does send evil spirits. He sent an evil spirit to Saul to torment him a while. He, sends, he sent an evil spirit to Job. You say, no, he didn't. He allowed it to go. He'll let evil do evil. But he will never, hear me, listen to me, he will never send a spirit of fear. That is never what God does. Fear does not come from God. Are you with me? Fear does not come from God to teach you faith. You are never put in a situation that will cause you fear so that you'll grow. That's never God. We have not been given a spirit of fear. The spirit we've been given is of love, power, and a sound mind. Everything that fear doesn't do is what God gives us. So fear takes away love, takes away what... You, the opposite of fear is love. I'm going to get to that. So it's not love. The, the fear does not believe in power. And it totally messes your mind up. And this is some of you are in this place where you are, de- what would you say? Debilitated. Some people need to help me preach. In other words, you're, you're paralyzed. I can't go possess the land. There's giants there. Fear. Peter says to Jesus, when they're all fearful on the boat, there's a storm coming. He's like, I think, I think there's a ghost walking on the water. I mean, do ghosts walk on water? I don't know. It's some, I don't know who it is, man. They're starting to, they're shivering with a little bit of fear, you know. And Jesus must have been close enough to shout because there's wind and the waves are, you know, splashing. He, he's close enough and he said, it is I. Don't be afraid. It's me, guys. Going up and down on the waves, you know. <laughs> How are you walking on the water? I don't need a boat. I'm the son of God. Told you I was going to meet you on the other side. I just had to pray a little while. I didn't have a boat, but I don't need a boat. I'm the son of God, right? And so Peter was like, that's really cool, Jesus. I want to go to you. I'm scared up here. I'm over here, and I'd like to walk to you. You with me? And Jesus is like, that's fine. On my word, come on, and I'll make sure that you'll be able to walk on water just like me. All of that said in one word, come. Peter gets out of the boat. He's... He's hanging on, okay? Now, you could still have a little apprehension, a little bit of fear in you, but it doesn't paralyze you. It, if it doesn't paralyze you and you actually do the will of God and the work of God, and the, that's just bravery, man. That's just courage. That's just what Christianity is all about. You face your fear. You don't think David was scared of Goliath? Of course he was. Of course he was. You don't think the thoughts went through his mind, I hope I don't miss, I hope I don't miss. He just conquered it, and he went on anyway. I believe Caleb, even though he said, give me this mountain, he thought, I hope I don't get too beat up and bruised up. And, you know, but there was enough in him that said, no, God is faithful. I just need to walk. Listen, if you have thick, solid ice, and you're really nervous about it, and you, you, you just kind of aren't sure if, it's gonna, if you're going to fall through, but you, you'll make it to the other side if you just keep walking over. But if you're not sure and you're not, oh, I'm going to sink. No, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. You'll stay in the boat. So maybe Peter was a little nervous, but he still he let go of the boat and he was walking. Now imagine with me, walking on water. That is a miracle. Yeah. And it's not like it is outside right now in the middle of Lake Michigan. You probably can't walk on that water. It's frozen. Peter was hitting, getting hit with waves. I'd love to see that in slow motion, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be awesome? You'd be like, I'm coming. Wow. You look back at the guys. He's like, You know, and he's just totally joyful. God is doing a miracle. I'm in the midst of a miracle. Overjoyed. This is powerful. Jesus, it's really you. The wind is blowing. I'm going to drown. You know, he's just like, what? Right? He never made it to Jesus. The Bible says he saw the wind was boisterous and the waves were crashing in and he got afraid and sunk. (laughs) And now the waves are so powerful and everything is so crazy that he was so scared he could have drowned. I don't even know. Well, he's a fisherman. He probably could swim. But there was fear in Peter. 
Because, I, how do you know? Because I know he said, Lord, help me. So Jesus, still standing on the water, picks him up, puts him on the boat, gets on the boat, the waves stop, everything's cool, and he looks at Peter and he says what? Why did you doubt? Doubt? I got out of the boat, man. Remember? Dun, 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 dun. That was me. I was powerful. It was great. No, I don't care about all of that that you did. You had a moment of fear grip you while you're in the midst of a miracle. Shame on you. And it was what he's trying to, he's trying to teach him something. He's saying, listen, I didn't tell you to get afraid. I told you not to be afraid. That was the first thing I said to you. And somewhere in the midst of me telling you come and you walking with me and all the miracles that I was doing, you got afraid and Jesus got angry. He is not pleased when we doubt. Faith is the substance of things not seen. It's the evidence. It's your evidence. It's proof that what you can't see is real. And the Bible says without it, he's not pleased. Are you with me? I don't want to yell at you today. I'm not trying to yell today. I'm trying to be cool today, trying to relax. So if you're not full of faith, full of faith. I got, there's guests here laughing at me. At least she's listening. Amen. If you are not full of faith, what is that? Faithfulness. So what is faithful? Faithful is the same thing as fearful. When you put full at the end of something, wonderful, that means it's full of whatever you just said. So full of faith. When you're full of faith, you are faithful. How many are married here today? Raise your hand. Chris, come on, brother. This is, this is for you, man. Let me tell you a little secret about marriage. You want your spouse to be faithful. I didn't get enough amens on that. As somebody who experienced the opposite. What does faithful mean in a marriage? That you'll believe you're married? Just believe. I believe I have a spouse. Does that make me faithful? <laughs> no. No, you've got to be faithful. In order, you do some stuff and you don't do some other stuff in order to be faithful. So when the Bible says faithful servant... You were a faithful servant. That means there was a lot of faith in you that caused you to do some stuff. And the opposite is true. There's a lot of fear in you that causes you not to do a lot of stuff that you should be doing if it wasn't for the fear. And fear takes all kinds of forms. Fear looks like doubt. Fear looks like uh, uh, it can turn into jealousy. It can turn into all kinds of things that God never intended for our bodies and our minds to inhabit or endure. Fear is not from God. So when you get fearful, you start to doubt. I don't think we're able to conquer these giants. It's just not possible. I'm, I'm just doubting. I don't think God is there. And, you know, I'm too sick for God to heal me. This situation is too messed up for God to intervene. He'd have done it by now if he wanted to. And you say all this stuff. It all has a source, and the source is fear. There's anger could very possibly be rooted in fear. David, what are you doing here? You're naughty. That's what he said. You're naughty. You came to just watch the battle. I know you. No, I came to bring you cheese and bread. Dad told me to bring you some food. He's worried about you having enough food, and I brought some food. What is everybody cowering back from this guy, this uncircumcised Philistine for? Oh, I know. And he gets on to him. He gets mad at him. I know you're not, I'm mad at you, Peter. Why are you mad at me? My brother brought you food, man. Why are you so mad? Because I'm scared to death of that giant over there, and I don't want, and it turns into anger sometimes. Are, are you listening? Because fear has a way of, like, possessing you, paralyzing you. It causes you to freeze. And scripture after scripture tells us that th 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 that, that is something that God does not, he does not condone. He doesn't, he doesn't like it. A faithful person is a trust, trustworthy person, a reliable person. Someone that is faithful is someone that understands uh, it's like the hallmark of human relationships. Faithfulness that matters. Faithfulness that, that gets, uh, uh, gets people to trust and gets people. God, the Bible says God is faithful so we can trust him. He does what he promises to do. And so God being faithful, we, we have the courage to, to, to hold him to his word. Hebrews 10, 23 says he is faithful that promised. 
Amen. Thou, uh, Psalms 36 and 5, thy mercy, O Lord, is in thy heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. And, and God um, expects us to trust him in his uh, faithfulness. In fact, some scripture that talks about having faith in God, there's a better translation of the Greek word would be this. Would, this is what faith in scripture means. Most of the time you read the word faith, it literally means having a firm persuasion. Being firmly persuaded. And other translations, other Bible translations will translate the word into faithfulness or faithful. And so as we walk in the spirit and as we walk with God, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faithfulness. We walk by being firmly persuaded that what God said is true. Are you still with me? The reason why you struggle and the reason why you sink and the reason why you're now wandering around waiting for God to fulfill his promise instead of possessing the land that God has promised you, joy, uh, uh, joy unspeakable, full of glory, relationships, community, brotherhood, all that stuff that God has promised you is broken down, is messed up in your life. Why? Because faithfulness is lacking in you. If you're not faithful and you don't have full of faith, you're possibly leaning towards Fearful, and so there's a thing about the faithful versus the fearful in Scripture. God says if you're faithful, there's no finger pointing at you saying, Oh, ye of little faith, wherefore did this thou doubt? Why are you doubting? Well, I'm doubting because the waves were bigger than my understanding of your word. I'm doubting because this divorce situation is bigger than what your promises are in the word. I'm doubting because this sickness that I have is greater than my understanding of your healing. I'm doubting because blah, 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 blah seems to be bigger and greater than God. What's bigger and greater than God? Your imagination. Fear. My wife quoted it this morning, or this, whatever it was, afternoon. Um, that it was morning somewhere, bro. But he, she said that we cast down imagination. She does like this. When my wife cleans up forward and she starts doing like this, she's in spiritual warfare. When you got something going on in your mind, she fighting the devil. The devil's lying to you. It's Whoa, man. Knock my eyes out. She said something about a dart. The, de uh, the darts of the devil are thrown at you. It's not like a dart of fire, you know, oh, God, I'm full of sin now. No, it's a thought. It's a thought. Are you with me? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not natural. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And you say, oh, that's the devil. That's not the devil. Strongholds start in your mind. That's why it says pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. He goes on to say we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to rephrase all of that. you got a fight in your mind going on right now versus fear versus faith. And there's only one solution, and that is to have a faithfulness. God told us in scriptures that if you show yourself faithful, I will reward you. If you show yourself fearful, I will take what you've been given in the first place. Every little bit of faith you had, I'm going to take it from you, and I'm going to give it to somebody else who's worthy of it. And that, to me, is a that's a good God doing that. A good, a good Lord. He said, if you're going to be a, a, a steward, I don't know where it is, Corinthians somewhere, uh, 1 Corinthians 4.12 maybe, I don't know where it is. But if you're, going to, if you're going to look for a steward, make sure that they are faithful. Amen. If you be found faithful, 1 Timothy 4.12 maybe it is, where Paul said, I'm so thankful that God chose me and thought me to be faithful enough to put me in ministry he said I was faithful and so he put me in ministry and so there's something that God is looking for in this crowd right now he's looking to see if I've got some faithful people or if they're fearful amen and some of you are paralyzed and possessed with fear you're worried see I'm not afraid of nothing man come at me bro come at me bro come at me yeah but your stock crashes or your job is you know threatened and now you lose your job and you lost your car you lost your come at me bro no I meant like I wasn't afraid of fighting but this is different this is I'm a little bit worried now some of you worry when you say when you hear I chew from somebody oh you're gonna get sick you're dead you're gonna be dead take this take this eat this do this sleep there all that is worry 
I'm not saying don't take medicine and don't sleep and take care of your bodies. Take care of your bodies and all, all. But there's a thing that grips you that causes you to worry. Jesus said, you are not worthy to be my disciple. I'm telling you. He said, if you put your hand to the plow and, and, and you let it go and you, you're trying to, you're doubting if you want to do this walk because it's kind of, no, 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 no. Listen, make up your mind right now. If you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. You know what that means? They crucified people. Jesus understood. They knew what a cross was. It's like saying, you want to follow me? Plug in your electric chair, sit down in it, and after you're done frying a while, get up and walk and follow me. Die to this world. Die to everything. There are things that grow in the ground. And they are supposed to produce fruit. And there are several reasons why they don't produce fruit. Jesus said the bird stole the seed. He said the roots were too shallow and the sun came and burned it up. And there was another thing that caused the, the, the vine or whatever it was, the, the tree, not to produce fruit. It was thorns and thistles choking the vine so that nothing could be produced. There was no fruit because of the thorns and thistles. And Jesus said, let me tell you what that parable means. Those thorns are the cares and the worries of this life. Cares and worries are choking you. They're paralyzing you. They're causing you to sit and not get up. They're causing you to lay your sword down and surrender instead of picking it up and saying, charge! I'm full of fear instead of full of faith. The Bible says there's a lake of fire waiting for you. I'm sorry. I'm in the book. The Bible says that the fearful that do nothing are wicked and slothful. But those that are courageous enough to say God is able, I'm still going to live for God even though all hell breaks loose in my life. I'm still going to make my way over to Jesus even though the wind and the waves are contrary. Even though I'm like a salmon swimming upstream, I'm still going to keep swimming. I'm still going to keep moving. I'm going to keep going I'm going to keep doing the things that I know are right well you know what that sounds a whole lot like a faithful servant it's just like old faith you know what I call old faithful old faithful because it keeps doing what it's been doing from old time amen it just won't stop going to do what is it you can trust it you can count on it Jesus said I'm not happy when you are fearful and John said fear has no place in God. God is love. And what casts out fear? Perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Fear comes to us because our lack of perfect love. Who has perfect love? We love him because he first loved us. And perfect just means mature, full grown. So his love is is good, it's pure, it's perfect, it's full grown. And what is the highest level of love? You love your wife? Say yes. You love your husband? Say yes. Good job. Pass the test. Do you trust him all the time? Do you love your daughter? Do you trust her all the time? There's a sense of trust, the highest level of love is when you can trust. Where there's no fear. I don't give my daughter a, a cutco knife. Here, go cut the cake. Here, cut. No, give me, I don't trust you with that knife. I love you, but I still need to protect you. And I get a little worried. I get a little fearful. The highest level of love. The, are you with me? The most mature, perfect love is the one that has no fear. And so when you are lacking trust... In God, you are lacking perfect love. And that is the place where fear steps in. And so I believe today that these, these things chain us. These things cause us to be, to be, to be fearful and, and, and paralyzes us. It's the reason why people don't tell somebody, you got to come to my church. Have you ever been to church? Oh, you never been to church? Let me tell you something. I, I used to do that. Oh, man, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Why? Because I'm not afraid of rejection. I'm not afraid of what you're going to say to me. I, I, want you to, I want you to know Jesus. Even if you think I'm an, a, a nerd or if I'm a goody-goodies or I'm Ned Flanders or if I'm some kind of, you know, some, some whacked out 
spaceman, that you are, that I'm no, no you're a weirdo, I don't want to talk. I don't care if you think of that, that, that. I've got something that I believe you need, and I'm not afraid to tell you, and I'm not afraid to do these things. That's why sometimes I say, you got a headache? You know, I get headaches every now and then. Sometimes God heals me of headaches. I know this is going to sound kind of weird and a little crazy, but do you mind if I lay my hands on you and pray for you? Man, most of the time people will say, don't touch me, man. Stay over there and pray for me. I don't know. Sometimes they'll be like, you know. I heard of a, of a, of a there, was, there was this conference. Stand with me. I'm, I'm closing. Here, come on. There was a conference that, um, let me tell you what happens when you don't have fear. Um, let me back up one step here and just, you know, faith. You know how you spell faith? Sometimes you spell faith R I S K. Sometimes you spell faith C-R-A-Z-Y. Yeah. Why did you get out of the boat, man? You cray-cray. <laughs> no, I just believed that he would do it. When I was praying one time, I, I often ask God tough questions just to see if I can hear from God. Let me give you, the guys you want to hear from God, let me give some tips. Sidebar. If you want to hear from God, ask God different off-the-wall things that you know that God would wouldn't answer unless you prayed like God I don't know what time it is right now can you tell me what time it is and if you if you oh I feel like it's 10 20 I feel like that's what God gave me then look at the watch look at your clock oh it's 10 20 maybe I can start to learn to hear the voice of God I know that sounds silly you do your own thing I'm praying and I'm like you know I don't know I don't know deep things in scripture nobody knows some of these answers like why did Peter get out of the boat why did he say bid me come who knows the answer to that God does so I'm like you know, Lord, why did Peter do that? What was he thinking? And I stopped and I just started to kind of meditate on it. I'm like, what if I was Peter? What would I be thinking? And it came to me. It came to me. The Lord told me. He said, Peter was afraid in the boat. But he knew that if I was out there, he would rather be with me in danger than without me in safety. And I was like, Wow. And while I'm praying, I'm deciding whether or not to start a church. And I said, Lord, I feel like I'm Peter. I'm safe in the boat. I'm safe. But if you want me out there. And, and the Lord said, clear as day. Anybody that wants to get close to me, no matter where it is, I'll put solid feet, uh, solid ground under your feet. Just keep walking, son. Just keep walking. And even if you have to walk on water, sometimes fear is spelled R-I-S-K. I mean, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Fear is always spelled B-O-O. B-O-O. -O. Yeah, B-O-H-O-O. -O. Help me, Holy Ghost. Cry, yeah, C-R-Y. Boo-hoo. She's taking notes. Like, can you say that again? Fear sometimes is risky. No, faith sometimes is risky. Preaching sometimes is risky. Coming to church with us here is always risky. <laughs> Let me just tell you a story I tried to set up, and now I don't even have an idea where we are. We're still in the boat here, man. We got to get out of the boat. There was a conference going on in a city somewhere, and there are preachers everywhere. Just, it was a preacher's conference. We call it general conference, right? So those of you who know what it is, general conference. 9,000 preachers, wives, preachers, and children, you know, people that have the desire to go to church for a week, every night, conferences, classes, sessionals, all this stuff. And they're out at a restaurant. And this lady is complaining of a migraine headache. And uh, Pastor Cisco is there. He says, ma'am, I'm sorry. I heard you complaining about your headache. Yeah, it's a really bad migraine. I've had it for a week. And he thought she was part of the conference. He thought that it would be all right for him to just say, I'm going I'm to pray for you. He didn't ask her. He just figured she's, you know, kind of a crazy Pentecostal at this conference. She's been in church all week. She's poor things, had a headache the whole time. Let's, let's just see if God will heal her. So there they are. He says, lift your hands. God's going to heal you right now in the name of Jesus. And he snaps her head back a little bit. And so she's like, okay. She lifts her hands. And he says, in Jesus' name, I command this headache to go away. And she goes, ah, it's gone. And he's like, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hey, brother, God just healed this woman. 
And, and, and then finally after the ruckus was done, and he's like, what church you go to? She's like, I've never been to church in my life. <laughs> what did you do to me? He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were a preacher's wife or something. Amen. Risk. That's what I try to tell that story. To tell you that. Sometimes you got to take a risk. Amen. Faith comes in many, 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 many opportunities. Praise God.